after Mendelssohn came, this situation wouldn't continue long anymore because Mendelssohn had taken away the insulation. And so the Jews began to listen to what the Gentiles said. And the Gentile opinion began to cause the Jews to despise themselves. <coughs> and after a while, the Jews became almost hopelessly poisoned with self hate. Sometimes even more than the Gentiles hated Jews, the Jews hated themselves. Why is that? Because the Gentile has other things to think about. He doesn't think about Jews day and night. The Jew, who has learned gentle attitudes, is living with himself always. And he learned to despise his own people. And in some cases, with a violent hatred. In Paris, right now they're going on riots, recently. This is now, the past week, riots of leftist elements in favor of the Arab terrorists. And among the main leaders are Jews. Now, how did it turn out that we don't have any Arabs who are leading groups in defense of the Jewish people? Why do we have Jews who are leading Arabs and other Jews in defense of terrorists who, whose only desire is to murder Jews? The answer is that Jewish self-hate develops in that way. When the Jew listened to Gentile ideas, he learned to hate his people. But since he's with his people all the time, he can't help being what he is, so he learns to hate himself. They despise their people with more intense hate than anyone else. And that's why the Jewish radicals are the most dangerous to our people. But even if you're not a radical, you cannot help today, even if you're a shiver man, you can't help being poisoned. Because the poison has come in from the outside. It's an attitude of despising what's truly Jewish. You fight against it. Now, some Americans are newcomers to Torah, and they don't understand that yet. They're so far gone, they're so Gentile, that they don't even have this attitude of Jewish self-hate yet. And so they look with admiration on Jewish things. Years later, they discover that to be Jewish is not necessarily a noble thing. They see that at, at best, it's greeted with a half smile, a little bit of levity. It's, it's not the most respectable, the most dignified thing. And that's the tragedy of the leaders of the state of Israel. These people have been poisoned through and through. They're leftists, all are leftists. And they hate anything Jewish. That's why the Israelis today, if you meet Israelis on the buses there, or they come out in this, outside of Eretz Yisrael, they say, we're not Jews, we're Israelis. They want to dissociate themselves from the Jewish people. They despise, they hate anything Jewish. Israel is something new. And all of them are like that. Golden Meir, and all of them. They want to break with the Jewish past and create something entirely new. They want to forget the image of what the Jew is. The Jew is something despised and in their minds hated. Which means we have a very big burden of prejudice to contend with. It's part of the darkness of this world. It's part of the wickedness, the shekel of Elam Hazer. The thing that's most precious, the people that's most decent, that deserves most to be loved and most to be cherished, that people, the Yetzirah, the evil of the world, has caused to be a target of all the wickedness. There has never been a nation that has been so insulted, so pilloried by writing and by preaching as the Jewish people in the Middle Ages. Their libraries were written against us. People don't know, you're innocent. <coughs> but if you are familiar a little bit with their literature, oceans of ink were poured out against us. And we are considered in the literature of the Gentiles, not only 
as a comic people. Today, when a Time magazine mentions something about orthodoxy, or the New York Times, it's always comical a little bit. We shouldn't be dignified. That's concealed anti-Semitism. But it covers up a, a, a very dark, deep foundation of hatred to us. In the Middle Ages, they weren't so bashful, and they spoke open words. The Jew was depicted as a devil. That was the language St. Bernard, St. Bernard is considered very nice guy. In literature, St. Bernard is one of the best Galochim, one of the best. He was helpful, you know, St. Bernard's dogs went out <laughs> to help the, the travelers stranded in the Alps. St. Bernard is a symbol of kindliness. This St. Bernard, if you could read his writings, nobody today, unless in Hitler, Nazi Germany, would have the boldness, the audacity to say what St. Bernard said. The most wicked statements and the biggest lies. He was one of the most wicked characters. Only in his generations, he was the only one. We can say a limus hus on him that in Gehenna, where he's sitting now, we should make it one degree less hot that there were people more wicked than he was. That's the best we can say. And he was one of the better ones. Because when the Jews were being massacred, St. Bernard stepped in and he said, it's not nice for us to kill the Jews. They have to live in misery all their lives. But to kill them is not necessary. But he didn't say it with too much emphasis with too much conviction. Now, there was a man from his 